Hi, I'm Elliot. I play drums in Touche Amore, and this is Humble Beginnings. Uh, first record that I bought um, would probably be Rage Against the Machine, Battle of Los Angeles. Uh, my first concert was when I was five years old. It was uh, Melissa Etheridge, Yes I Am tour. It's kind of tough because um, even though it kind of would have been more my thing, my dad would always take me and my friends to shows just because he wanted to experience it too. I'm trying to think of the first more punk kind of thing I would have gone to. Maybe Mill and Colin. Uh, first no, 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 take that back. Homegrown, RX Bandits. First band I played in was called Tiptoe Charlies. Um, it, we started in seventh grade, finished out my first year of college. Um, we kind of wanted to sound like Thursday meets Thrice or something like that. Yeah, that was um, our middle school graduation. Like our, basically our class had uh, our own party in the auditorium and we played it. Probably the Melissa Etheridge Yes I Am tour t-shirt. First stage dive was at the AFI uh, Sing the Sorrow record release show in which um, I've realized now that I got the tickets from, I think the record store that Joey Cahill from 6131 was working at the time. Um, yeah, that was my first time crowd surfing and then stage diving. Uh, yeah, they were called LAO. They were, um, uh, we, my band played a show with them at the Cobalt Cafe, which was kind of our local all ages venue. Um, me and the drummer were both wearing Despair Faction t-shirts, which was the AFI fan club, and we became friends, and I was like super into their band. I still keep in touch with some of those guys. Um, our first tour was spring break of my last year in college. Um, there were a lot of wild stories, considering uh, our old guitar player Tyson was still in the band. Um, Nothing appropriate coming to mind. I think it, it would probably it could have been something like another bad creation or something like that or like like crisscross another bad creation something like that. Nine Inch Nails and David Bowie, Universal Amphitheater, nineteen ninety five. Well, the second concert uh, was uh, Weezer. Um, it was the last, it was Weezer at the Palace. It was the Michael and Carly tribute show, and it was the last concert that they played before they broke up for those four years. Cool. First local band I attached myself to probably was, uh, it was probably Taken, to be honest with you. Um, there was, a, you know, I grew up, I grew up going to a lot of like metal shows and, and stuff like that in Hollywood. The Troubadour would have a, uh, a, a thing where 21 and up free or five dollars. Do you remember these? Did you used to go to those? I went to only a couple. I remember okay. seeing Sayosin at one of those. And, and it was I, like, I, Dredge, had to pay I had to pay three bucks to get in because I wasn't 21 at the time. Okay, I remember like Dredge was a yeah. band that would always do those. But um, it's funny at those times, I saw like, I mean, I have like a System of a Down demo cassette. And I have the Static, when they were just called Static before Static X, yeah. I have the demo cassette. Papa Roach, all that stuff. All those bands used to be like these local bands that would play these these three dollar Monday nights at the Troubadour that my friends and I would go to. Uh, but I didn't attach myself to those bands in a way where I was like, you know, on the edge yeah. of my seat needing to see them play again. But Taken was a band that that when I was getting into hardcore was was the first hardcore band to attach myself to. Um, yeah. Um, I, some friends of mine and I in junior high. Uh, started a band with the most metal high school name ever called Victim of Atrocity. I very poorly played guitar and very poorly sort of sang in it. Um, I think we just did covers. We did a talent show where we covered Blind from Korn. Nice. Uh, was that the first show you played? Was that talent show? Yes. Yes. Um, I, wore, I wore an Adidas jumpsuit and they both dressed like members of Marilyn Manson. We're, it was, it was eighth grade, man. I don't know. <laughs> um. 
Uh, I, um, I remember a couple of my first ones. I don't remember which what order they were, but I remember having a uh, a no effects white trash two heaps and a bean shirt and not realizing how potentially offensive and racist that shirt would be for a uh, for a small white kid. And it was like in seventh grade to wear. Yeah. But I had that. I had a Green Day Dookie shirt. I had a Dead Kennedy shirt. I've said this before, but I feel like junior high is the time when you're allowed to have the most eclectic band shirts that no one's going to judge you on. You can wear a Guns N' Roses shirt one day, you can wear a Dead Kennedy shirt the next day. No one cares. Everything is, everything is allowed. Oh, uh, wow. First stage dive might have been like Poison the Well at the Showcase Theater or something like that in like 2001. The first band that I ever had a touring experience with, with was the band before this one. And uh, it, was, it was the most, um, uh, boot camp version of, of tour where like we had a, our first van was a van was a van that was bought off of a gardener for $900 and it it barely ran it was piss yellow uh, there was like a mound of dirt in the back yeah. like it was just the m most uncomfortable seats possible we slept in the thing in Walmart parking lots almost every single night um, and god I mean our, our band broke down one time and I ended up riding with another band on the tour. And while I was doing that, the other members uh, had a day off in Vegas that they went, they went to Vegas with the other band and they, uh, you remember this. Yes, this is the one I met you. Yes, exactly. This is good, this we can tie yes. this together. Yeah, and they, uh, and they spent all of the little amount of money that we had to fix the van. They put it all on roulette and lost all of our money. Um, that was one of the last things that happened with me being in that band. I was, that was pretty much the end of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that happened. Um, there was also times where like we would, you know, look for a place to stay, and then someone would say you could stay at this house, and we show up, and it's like a it's a meth lab in the basement. In the basement, that happened in Idaho. Um, everything bad, pretty much happened on that on those tours. But um, you know, it also taught me a lot. So I, I I don't regret any of it. I'm happy it happened. It uh. It made my my skin quite thick to uh, start to run with this band. So, learning experiences. The first compact disc I purchased was Blink 182 Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. First concert I ever went to was Warp Tour 2001 with my sister. She dragged me along, and that was also the first time I ever crowd surfed to less than Jake. Suicide Machines at the Troubadour in 2005. Uh, yes, it was a ska punk band called The Shenanigans, and I was very into them and went on to become very good friends of mine. Very first band I played in in seventh grade was called Exposition, and it was a pop punk band that basically just ripped off Blink-182 in every way. The very first show that I played was at the Cobalt Cafe when I was in eighth grade. It was on a Saturday afternoon at around 2 p.m. and the only people there were my dad and the other bands and I had a very good time. Um, the very first tour that I did was with my band DNF when I was in high school and I believe I was a junior and I took two days off of school and the only way I was able to convince my parents to let me do it was that I told them I was going to look at colleges on the way so what we would do is we had like a show in San Diego so we drove to UCSD and I would hop out and grab a bunch of pamphlets and like about the school and like you know on campus activities and then we would drive to the show and play and I think we also played like Las Vegas and I think I jumped out and grabbed stuff for that too. Yes, uh, Rancid. It was a Rancid shirt from MacheteMFG.com. Um, it had Rancid in like neon green stencil font and a band photo on the front. And I thought it was the coolest shirt ever. And I wore it until it just disintegrated. I don't know what the first record I bought with my own money was. The first 
album I can remember really wanting as a little kid was the Michael Jackson Gold Collection. And I uh, made my parents buy it the first day on CD. I uh, also had a bunch of cassettes before that. Um, but I don't remember the first record I bought with my own money. First concert experience I had, uh, first concert I wanted to go to was Pop Disaster Tour, Jimmy Eat World, Green Day, Blink-182. Uh, yeah, one, it's still one of the best shows I've ever been to. Local band that probably affected me the most was a local hardcore band called Bleeding Kansas that uh, grew up down the street from me. And uh, I saw them play an uncount <laughs> uncountable amount of times. And uh, yeah, still, still think they're an incredible band, and uh, I got to see them open for Converge and a bunch of amazing bands, and yeah, so that, that was the kind of local band that affected me the most. Ah, the first band I ever played in. Um, well, it's hard to say. You know, you have your bands that you start that don't play shows, and then... So, my first band that didn't play shows that I started with, actually, Tyler from Touche 2, was called The Murder of Crows. And then, um, the first band I ever played shows with was uh, called Mangy Mutt. Uh, the first show that I played um, was with Mangy Mutt. Uh, we played at a anarchist collective in Echo Park. <laughs> um, and we played with a band called Phobia Rector and Blood or Lipstick, and maybe one other band, um, Le Joshua, of course, uh, was another band that I loved that was kind of from, I think, West LA area. One time we played a bunch of shows in uh, Washington area and we just kept coming back to Tacoma over and over and over again and that's where we just kept staying. and. Um, we were supposed to play the show that we kind of hopped on last minute in a garage and we ended up getting caught up watching Austin Powers and we showed up like an hour late to the show and uh, <laughs> it was just it was just one of those things where we had we had decided that that day Austin Powers was more important than playing, <laughs> playing a show um, but it's all people that we're still friends with now and I, I look back on that tour super fondly because it's like I said, it's, it's people that we're still friends with to this day, and it's pretty cool. I think the first band shirt I got was a Green Day shirt that was like an anime ripoff. Um, it said like, uh, international superhero or something, something along those lines, and yeah, it was like an anime ripoff. <laughs>